This is entirely too much laptop for most all of you. This is the GPD Duo. This is GPD's latest laptop that can do two screens. In fact, you could make it into a tablet if you really wanted to. This thing is absolutely <laughs> insane. Very quickly, let me take you to a brief detour of a video I shared on Twitter of what I'm actually doing with this thing. My desk and studio continue to be a mess, so I do apologize for that, but this is the GPD Duo. This is their new laptop. It has two OLED screens. They're only 60 hertz, but honestly, that's fine because I'm outputting to my LG CX48, which is 4K 120. You can't really see it right there, but back there is my 4090 connected to Oculink on the GPD Duo, and in fact, you can see it right there, 4090 and then the 890M on the Strix Point. But guess what? We also have another PCIe slot. That's an Elgato capture card going through Thunderbolt right there, and that's not all. We also have 2.5 gigabit network this thing is insane legitimately like that comes off as like an infomercial is like and one more thing and one more thing literally this thing does more stuff like you can see that it turns into a tablet there is this has touch input right so you can see that this works there's also dis uh, a tablet interface so you can use a a pen so i have to find a pen to like do that for the more thorough view later on but even if if you wanted to undo this this display right here on the top display you have the ability to plug in an external device on the side here and use this as a secondary display that isn't for the PC at all. There are so many crazy go nuts features on here that a lot of people like are, it's too much computer for everyone. It's like listing everything that you could possibly get on something and then putting it on here. Basically someone went up to like GPD and they said, Hey, GPD, what features do you want on the GPD duo? And they said, yes. This thing is absolutely insane. And it's not even just all of the features, right? There's a few different configurations that you can get. They sell it with Strix points, so AMD's latest one. That's going to be more on the pricier side. But if you wanted to save a bit more money, they do offer the Hawk Point version. So that'll be the 8840U. And they have 16 gig and 32 gig on Strix points, 32 gig and 64 gig. So if you really wanted like a full on workstation, legitimately, this is what's going to replace. I have a GBD Win Max 2 that has been my desktop replacement. I go to a 4090, like I had already showed you in that Twitter feed. So I'm now going to use this and Strict Point works great with Oculink out. I have 2.5 gigabit on, on my network. Like this is literally too much tech for most people. But if you are an Uber nerd like me, this <laughs> has everything you want. And that's not all, like not even just the features that are here. Like. I don't know anyone that's going to like legitimately use this as like a, a, a tablet, right? Like perhaps that might come in, but for me, I'm going to use it. Those dual displays stacked up so that I could have a three display monitor. That means I'm going to have three OLED screens. So I have two 13.3 inch OLEDs and then my 48 inch CX48, LG CX48. So I do 120 Hertz there. These are 60 Hertz, but it's still all OLED just basking goodness onto my face, but that's not all right. Like, so there's an 80 watt hour battery on this and you have the ability to dictate what percentage you want that battery to charge up to that's in the bios now so gpd allows this so now you can do 70 percent, 80 percent, 90 percent, 95 percent. but this is really nice so for, especially for me where i'm going to be using this as a desktop replacement i don't want this the battery to be at 100 percent all the time leaving it at 80 percent is going to be the most ideal so having that in the bios to limit how far the battery charges that's a great improvement to see from GPD, so I'm glad that's in there. But that's not all either. The heatsink and fan solution on this can push the device to 60 watts. So I've already started testing this, and so far it's pretty good, but I do have to do more thorough testing, and that's going to be for a full review later on, so stay tuned for that. But it can do 60 watts, and it can cool it at 60 watts. So again, Strix Point, as it is Zen 5, the desktop chips, they were like 65 watt. Only lately have they been boosting up to like 105 watt through updates to the motherboard. So for <laughs> intents and purposes, like I have like full fat Zen 5 here. Yes, it is a mobile part, but it's still screamingly fast. We can do some really outrageous stuff. If we wanted to go full hardcore on tuning, we can disable the Zen 5C cores or the Zen 5 cores and just run on the Zen 5C cores. There's lots of cool information that we can extract from this. That's another feature that, again, I'm going to have to wait until the full review. There's just too much stuff. And even that's not all. We can actually push memory to 8,000 mega transfers. What that means to you is typically a lot of Strix Point laptops were capped at 7,500 mega transfers. But on the GPD Duo, we can go ahead and set it to 8,000. And we're getting the speeds that we're showing there for bandwidth 
and it's been stable. While I've been doing a bunch of crazy stuff, like connecting it to a 4090, having Thunderbolt 4 go out to another eGPU solution, but that's not to a GPU, it's to a Elgato PCIe capture card. It's still a bunch of craziness, right? I have I have PCI, uh, PCIe getting piped through the Thunderbolt 4, I have PCIe getting piped over Oculink to my 4090, all while all of this is running and it's just swimming along. It's absolutely outrageous how much stuff is going on on this. But even that's not all. With PBO, we can actually undervolt the CPU and GPU as well, which, you know, is going to make testing this and reviewing this even harder because I'm going to have to take it in a lot of different directions to see how well that works. Now, the thing here to understand, the GPU, while I did undervolt the GPU, the GPU I put it to negative 50 millivolt, and it actually crashed the system. Now, I didn't get a chance to test before and after with, you know, no, no undervolt versus undervolt on, but the mere fact that it crashed signifies that the undervolt is working so that is super awesome as well so not we just like this thing is absolutely outrageous there are so many features that are available on this thing it's just kitted out like crazy and then we can take it even further in the bios with a bunch of options and features it's super awesome. Let's get into some of me demoing it. And then we're going to show you some video games that I'm playing over my 4090 while I'm capturing on the device itself and using NVIDIA Broadcast to, to remove me for like auto green screen me. It's pretty wild. So let's check it out. All right. So here we are messing around with the GPD Duo. And as you can see right here, this spot right here where the GPU went down to doing nothing was OBS being closed and me opening it back up. Technically, all of this GPU usage that you see right here is literally just the nvidia broadcast taking out all of this stuff so it's like auto green screening me so uh i am using a tremendous amount of performance based on whatever is going on on the 4090 i seriously doubt that it's taking 60 percent of my gpu to auto green screen me but i'll play some video games and we're doing everything directly on the the gpd do itself you can see how much is getting attacked by just a bunch of stuff going when i have other filters going on now what's interesting is is that i could actually encode using the amd 890m graphics card that was that's on the gpu duo so i can have the 890m doing encode but it really doesn't matter because you can see that you can see the video encode block right here for nvidia so there's lots of different things and then also here is the camera for the gpd duo so that's this is the camera quality that you would get on the gpd duo itself it's actually not that bad. You can actually see right here, like right there, right all the different PlayStation 3s I have for uh, for reasons. So that's all of my PlayStation 3s. Uh, let's go ahead and play some games now. What should be noticeable here, hopefully, let me bring up hardware info. So we're using around 40 watts right now. I can go up to about 60. Uh, right here you can see that we are spiking to 5.3 gigahertz so pbo is activated like i had showed you earlier on in this video we're going to show a bunch of other stuff and see how much performance is lost by me encoding and doing a bunch of other stuff directly on the machine so let's play some games all right so the first game we're going to be looking at is space marine 2 so my gpu is busy auto green screening me you can see i'm using the 49 here we could use the 890m but that would be frankly ridiculous it is going to my lg cx48 I am running a borderless. You can see it's 4K native. Resolution upscaling says DLSS, but it's native. So I don't know what that's going to be doing. Go ahead and continue the game where I left off because I pretty much finished the first tutorial section, which is kind of just walking you through some stuff. Like, look at that. Look at all of that. Like, <laughs> like look what's going on. This is insane how much stuff they got going on. I'm doing 85 FPS right now, but I'm doing native 4K. The amount of horde that they have in this is insane. Like what they have going on here, and I mean, there's a lot going on. <laughs> oh man, this game's so much fun. Man, this game's pretty. All right, let's see if we can't improve frame rate any. Uh, let me go ahead and do... Let's not do native. I'll do balanced, right? And see what 
changes. I'm like at 100 FPS. I don't know if I actually improved anything here. Like if it was like worthwhile. I guess, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is a bit better. All right, so here is Returnal. We are running 4K. But so you can see we're running 4K right here. I am running Epic settings, so this is like Uber Ultra settings. We are using DLSS. I am using the quality mode of DSS, DLSS, and we are using Frame Gen as well. And with those settings, I'm getting around 123 FPS right now. So 4K Epic, uh, it runs fantastic. The other thing to note, again, my machine is busy also encoding this video stream and then auto green screening me, and I'm still getting this performance. Returnal itself, when we're when we're running, holy goodness, this weapon is devastating. <laughs> Returnal is just devastating on GPUs, but it's nothing at 4090 can't tackle. <laughs> I mean, I'm really punishing the system. There's a lot of crazy go nuts things going on with this machine right now. So I have Thunderbolt, right? Like I already showed you before, we have Thunderbolt to my Elgato Elgato PCIe capture card, which is doing nothing, but there is PCIe lanes going that way. My 4090 is going through Oculink, which is restricted to that four lanes uh, PCIe 4. And then, you know, we're rendering this game at 4K Epic settings, but we are using DLSS with frame gen. And then I'm also using the encoder, and my CPU is busy actually encoding this right now, all on the same machine. And on the GPD Duo, like, I have one screen up there that is watching this stream so that I can see what's going on. This is a really cool setup. Die, aliens. My health looks okay. Big battle. I got nothing on me. Oh, I walked right into that bullet. Health still looks pretty okay. Oh, Christmas. Alright, not too bad. Super smooth. You gotta love it. And finishing off our look at high-end gaming, we're gonna do 4K on Cyberpunk 2077, but we're also going to do, in graphics mode, ray tracing overdrive. So we are using DLSS Super Resolution, DLSS Frame Generation. Everything else is as high and maxi as it can go. This game looks very pretty when you max it out. So we'll jump right into that. So getting around 100 FPS, 106 FPS. But again, because I'm encoding and doing other stuff, I know I get higher FPS in this. So this is just encoding and what we're seeing when doing like if you were going to be using this machine for streaming or productivity purposes, it can go pretty far. 4K Ultra Squizzle Dizzle, getting around 100 FPS right now. Man, look at all the ray tracing. Look at the reflections off the car. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm not in the mood for hijacking any vehicles just yet. Just trying to walk around and take a look at all the pretty lights. Goodness gracious. That's prediddle. I really like the red engine. It's kind of unfortunate that Cyberpunk is going to be, uh, Cyberpunk. CD Projekt Red is going to be moving over to Unreal. <laughs> he just run you over. It's totally not like Grand Theft Auto. It's pretty funny. I'm the only one breaking the law. Everyone's just lining up to cross the road, and I'm just standing in the middle of it. And look at how that looks, though. That looks so good. Man, that looks so awesome. I don't even know how this is supposed to look with without, like, RTX Maxi Schmacks. Oof. It is a sight to behold at this fidelity. I'm just I'm just looking at the reflection and seeing if I can see the RTX working. So there's the security services. 
Yeah, right there. Look, you can see it right reflecting. That's so awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. Like I said, this is not the full review earlier on in this video. This is more of a quick impressions and kind of a showcase of what the GPD Duo is capable of because this thing, <laughs> it's just a monster of just feature set and specs on a, on a paper that have been crammed into a four and a half pound laptop. It is super, super awesome. I'm still have a lot to do. I still have a bunch to test and that full review will be coming out later. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you very much to my YouTube channel members as well as my Patreon members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.